makes it easy for you to import your images into the program. You can directly import images that you've stored on your computer, but you can also import images from a memory card, camera, phone, external hard drive, and the list goes on. If you have a device that stores images and you have a way to transfer those images to your computer, chances are you can import directly into Lightroom. Although we've already walked you through the basic steps to importing images in a previous lesson, we're going to devote this entire lesson to importing images as well. We'll learn how to import from a digital camera, organize copied photos into folders, create an import preset, make a backup file, rename image files, import images from a hard disk, add metadata, import images using drag and drop, import video, import images from Photoshop Elements or another catalog, and use tethered shooting. To import images from a digital camera or memory card, you first have to set preferences in Lightroom so that images are imported when you connect your camera or memory card to your computer. Go to Edit Preferences on a PC and Lightroom Preferences on a Mac, then click the General tab. Next, go to the Import Options section. Make sure that there's a check mark beside Show Import Dialog when a memory card is detected. Chances are, when you use your camera to take pictures, your camera creates folders and folder names to store the images. If you don't want to use those folder names, put a check mark beside Ignore Camera Generated Folder Names when naming folders. If your camera records raw images, it may also create JPEG versions. If you wish to import both versions, put a check mark beside Treat JPEG Files Next to Raw Files as Separate Photos. If you're on a PC, click OK when you're finished. If you're on a Mac, simply close the dialog box. Now you can connect your camera or memory card to your computer. If you see the autoplay dialog box appear on your computer when you do this, double click on import photos using Photoshop Lightroom. If you don't see the Lightroom dialog box appear once you've followed these steps, you'll have to open Lightroom and then go to File, Import Photos and Videos. However, the dialog box should appear in compact mode. You can click the downward arrow on the lower left hand side to see the expanded box. Always start out with the top panel when importing photos. Go to Select a Source and select the source that contains the images. Next, tell Lightroom how to handle the files that will be imported. You can choose Copy as DNG, Copy, Move, or Add. Select the destination where the files will be copied, as well as any keywords or metadata that are applied to the images. Your camera or memory card should now show as the source or the from in the Import dialog box. If your memory card is listed as a removable device, go to the Source panel in the Import dialog box. Select it from the Files list. You also want to be sure the Include Subfolders option is checked. Next, go back to the top panel and choose Copy from the Import Type options. You want to choose Copy so that the photos are copied from the camera or memory card to your hard disk and then added to your catalog. This way, the original photos are left on your camera or memory card. Below the Import options, you'll see All Photos, New Photos, and Destination Folders. Leave this on All Photos. However, you can move your mouse over New Photos and Destination Folders to learn what these options do. Now you can go through the images in the Work area and uncheck any that you don't wish to import. Do not click the Import button just yet. Continue on through this lesson so we continue to show you the correct way to import images. Before you import images from your memory card or camera, you want to set up Lightroom so that those images are organized into folders for you. Go to the right panel group and go to the destination panel. Click the plus sign at the top left hand side of the panel. Choose create new folder from the context menu. Click new folder. Name the new folder imported images for the purpose of this course. Press enter. Change the destination folder to the imported images folder. The new folder is then listed as the destination folder. Now you can use the Organize menu in the Destination panel to organize the images as they're copied on your hard disk. These are your options. Into one folder will copy all images into the folder you just created. 
By date, we'll organize them by capture date. The image will be copied into your folder, then organized into subfolders by capture date, based on the date format that you select. For the purpose of this course, we're going to choose Into One Folder. Next, click the Into Subfolder checkbox. Enter a name for the subfolder that will contain the images. If you're regularly importing photos into Lightroom, you can speed up the process by creating import presets. An import preset can include the source, import type, file handling and renaming options, keywords, and destination. To create a preset, set up everything in the import dialog box, then select Save Current Settings as a new preset from the Import Preset menu. This is below the preview pane. Name the preset and then click OK. Lightroom gives you the ability to create a backup of your images at the same time that you add them to the catalog. To create a backup, go to the Import Photos dialog box, then expand the file handling panel on the right. Put a check beside Make a Second Copy To. Next, click the triangle to the right of the option that you just checked. Select Choose Folder so you can specify a folder for the backup copies. Locate the folder you wish to use and then click Select Folder. If you want to rename your image files as they're imported, go to the File Renaming panel in the right panel group. Put a check mark beside Rename Files. From the Template menu, choose Custom Name Sequence. Then type a name in the custom text box and then press Tab on the keyboard. If you look at the sample at the bottom of the panel, you can see how your images will be named. The first image will be the name that you specified with a 1 following it. The second will have a 2 and so on. Now choose Custom Name X of Y from the Template menu. Next choose Edit from the Template menu. You'll see the File Name Template Editor. In this dialog box you can choose to have file names that use the metadata in your images. This includes capture dates, file names, ISO settings, etc. Click Done when you're finished with changes. At this point you can click Import to import the images from the external device. When you import from a hard disk instead of from a camera, you can add them to your catalog without moving them from their location, as well as copy them. To import images from a hard disk, such as your computer, CD, DVD, or external storage, go to File, Import Photos and Video. Next, go to the Source panel on the left and find the folder that contains the images. We already taught you how to do this earlier in the course. Choose Add from the Import Type options in the top panel. Uncheck any images that you don't wish to import. Go to the Source panel and uncheck the Include Subfolders option. Do not press the Import button just yet. Metadata is attached to image files and provides information about the image, such as flag status, creation date, keywords, etc. You can add metadata to your images to make it easier to organize and sort. However, some metadata is already generated for you whenever you take a photograph. To add metadata, go to the Apply During Import panel on the right. Select New from the Metadata menu. Enter a name for the photos you're importing in the Preset Name field. Now enter any metadata that applies to the images, such as copyright information. After you import the images, you can add metadata for individual images as well. Click the Create button when you're finished. If you want to edit metadata, select Edit Presets from the Metadata menu. Go back to the Apply During Import panel. This time choose None from the Develop Settings menu. Add keywords in the Keywords text box. Remember, these are keywords for all images, not just individual ones. Next, go to the File Handling panel. Select Minimal from the Build Previews menu. When you're finished, you can click the Import button below the right panel group. Once you click Import, all your images are imported into your catalog. You'll see thumbnails of the images in the grid view. To import images by drag and drop, open Windows Explorer on a PC or Finder on a Mac. This is usually shown in your taskbar on your computer, not in Lightroom. Position it so you can see the grid view in the Lightroom behind it. Open the folder that contains images that you want to import. Make sure to add any metadata in the Apply During Import panel. Now drag an image from the folder in Windows Explorer or Finder to the grid view. All images in the folder will appear in grid view. However, only the one you dragged will have a check mark above it. 
you can put check marks above all the images that you want to import. Then click the Import button. You can also import video into Lightroom. To do this, go to File, Import Photos and Video. Use the Import dialog box just as you would for photos, except this time import a video. Just as with photos, you can view a thumbnail in loop view by double-clicking on it. If you've ever used Photoshop Elements before, you know that Elements also creates a catalog of all of your images. You can import those files into Lightroom complete with metadata such as ratings, keywords, and labels. To do this, go to File, Import from another catalog. Find the catalog on your computer and then click the Choose button. Tethered shooting refers to a process where you connect your camera to your computer. The images you capture are saved to your hard drive instead of the memory card. When you use tethered shooting, you can view the images as you take them. You can also use tethered shooting to capture images directly into Lightroom using many DSLR cameras on the market today, including many Canon and Nikon cameras, without using any additional software. Here's a list of compatible cameras. If your camera is not one that is supported by Lightroom, you can use the image capture software that came with your camera or other third-party software. Sofort Build is a good third-party software for tethered shooting on a Mac. If you're going to use third-party software, be sure to research it well because they may not all work. Here's how to take images using tethered shooting with a camera that is supported by Lightroom. First, connect the camera to your computer and then go to File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. Make sure your camera doesn't have a memory card in it with a lot of pictures, because it could take a long time for Lightroom to recognize the camera. You'll then see the Tethered Capture Settings dialog box. Type a session name in the Session Name field. A folder will be created inside the Destination folder. Next, choose a naming scheme for the images. Add any metadata that you want and then click OK. As you take pictures, these images will show up in the grid view and the film strip. If you use a third-party image capture software, Lightroom will take the images from the watched folder and add them to your catalog. A watched folder is simply a folder that you tell Lightroom to watch. Whenever images are added to it, Lightroom moves them to a location that you specify and adds them to your catalog. Make sure you specify the watched folder to your third-party software as the folder where your images should be saved.